Okay. I don't know. No, stand up. Stand up. Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I am now doing interviews on my own DMK website, which I probably just set up before this interview. Um, we have a very, very special guest that's actually helped me run a lot of events with DMK, and they may have not been successful, but that's totally fine because we were trying to figure things out, but now we found like this new home, Cafe Clutch. So this is Liam O'Neill. I will explain to you, Liam O'Neill. Leon O'Neill has started the High Queerness Lending Library, runs the Warm Leatherette event, right? Yep. Um, you've also run punk shows. What was your, actually, this is a good question. What was your punk show names before? Do you remember? Yeah, uh, okay. Red Minion Collective back in the day. Yeah. And then Tiny Beast Collective. Jesus Christ. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, you ran the Calgary <laughs> School. Oh, oh, yeah, Calgary School of Informal Education. Calgary School of Informal Education, which was the each one teach one method of learning about random stuff, which is really awesome, and a very avid supporter of this place, Cafe Clutch. So now, everybody, we will now start the interview with a random edit because I forgot to press record. Um, the whole point is to showcase this whole place and explain to people what it's about because I don't think people really understand what it's about. There's many moving parts to this place. We got a, what do we got? We got a shelf life books thing. We got a queer book library. So you can, it's a lending library, so it's like all handmade and all that stuff. Not handmade, but like... Curated. Yeah, it's all curated, all handmade. We, we also have, we usually have art in the back, so... There's some over there. We got a Tiny Frames Festival, so if you see those pictures in the frame, you will see that there's some over there. Um, and we have coffee. And the coffee is also curated. Like, everything's curated. The beer's curated here, too. So, like, everything's curated. But today we're talking to Liam about what he contributed to this whole place. Because one of the biggest things that's in Cafe Clutch is the library. So, Liam, explain yourself to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I started a library. You started a library, but you've actually done a lot more stuff. Like, explain your background, like where you came from and, like, what scenes you came from. Because you've been promoting for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I came from the punk scene. Yeah. <laughs> Before. Uh, when did you start? That's, like, another question. When I went punk? Yeah. Like, 1998. Jesus Christ. I have pictures to prove it. 1998? Mm -hmm. Wow. What was your first show, actually? I want to know that. Yeah, so we went, this is bad, but we went to a CD store in El Joseph. My friends were stealing uh, rap, like Wu-Tang Clan CDs, and I bought an Offspring CD. Yeah. And then our first show, we went to saw, I saw this band, punk band called Consumed at the Republic. And then uh, someone gave us a flyer for other shows, and then we started listening to CJSW. And like we got into punk too because of skateboarding. I'm not very good at skateboarding, but... You were, just, you were doing skateboarding, or was that like just a big thing in Okotoks? I think it was just a big thing in the 90s. We were all skateboarding, I was just very terrible at it. Okay. Sorry, I just had to Oh, it's closer. Liam has been a big part of all the shows that run here at Cafe Clutch, too. Um, almost all the shows, because I do events here at Cafe Clutch, all the shows that are curated, Liam like tells me, you should book this person. <laughs> Also does Controller Club at Cafe Clutch, too. I think you should explain that as well. Oh, yeah, Controller Club. 
controller club um, started because someone that we're all friends with needed to practice their DJing and like they started to DJ like practice here and then we decided that other people should come and practice and then it turned into like a Sunday night thing and then we bought a bunch of gear and then people started using it and practicing and then real DJs came like our friends and then started teaching too real DJs like John I'm not a DJ <laughs> real producers like John no, I'm not a producer. I'm joking I'm a producer John is a producer not a <laughs> DJ so don't book him for DJing <laughs> I've seen him DJ, but I DJ. People yeah. come on Sundays and uh, they kind of teach each other. Yeah, and it's like super casual. Okay. And chaotic. And chaotic. It's just great. Um, I want to like go in depth of like how many events you've put on for a long time because it's been a lot, and your approach to events because it's very unique. Is it? Yeah, not a lot of people do it the way you do it. Really, they don't. Like, a lot of people kind of are like, I'm professional, I'm skilled, and I gotta do this thing. You're just literally like, I'm gonna use Instagram, and then I'm gonna figure it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know how many events I put on a lot. Like, yeah. 10, I, but I ran two, well, I didn't run, I ran, I per- personally ran one all ages venue that was, like, pretty illegal, which is not that fun when it's illegal. And then I helped run a legit venue uh, at Central United Church. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before, when I first put on, started putting on shows, you do it the old, not the old-fashioned, but like you'd hand out flyers and put up posters, and I'd, I'd see you at a show, and I'd give you a, a flyer. And then social media came, and like it made things easier, but way harder, too, because you started relying on it. So I'm kind of like running Instagram, like almost flyering when someone... Maybe it's annoying. I've heard I'm annoying from a few people. I love drama. But you have to be But, like, honest. when someone likes my photo, I, like, reach out and, like, invite them personally to stuff, which is almost like putting on a flyer because people aren't going to come unless you, like, reach out and talk to them. Especially, but I'm running DJ nights more like punk shows where everything's, like, more flat and, like, mm-hmm. DIY. I mean, we try our hardest, but... It, and, like, my warm leather and stuff is, like, more for baby DJs. I do like know some really good like established nice DJs like Isis and some of those type of like some of that like crew come out sometimes and help out but like we run everything kind of more like a punk show which is like I think there's like multiple ways of doing things I just run it like the way I run punk shows because that's what I'm used to I got another question how did you meet Jess I know how you met Jess but tell people how you met Jess I met Jess at the the new gallery I think and then we lived together. Yeah. How long did you live with Jess for? Like a year, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So good. Um, so when did Jess approach you about doing stuff here at Cafe Club? No, I think I just, like, showed up. Oh, okay. You just showed up and asked? Or... Well, I knew Jess from, like, when the shop was, like, really tiny. Like, when it was just in the closet. Like, literal closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2014, right? It was a while ago. And, like, she uh, just actually, like, hired someone from my work. Like, because uh, I support people that identify with disabilities. And she, like, one of her first hires was, like, someone that I supported. Oh, okay. Like, Jess is always, like, very open to hiring, giving anyone a chance. I got to explain to people. If you don't know who Jess is, Jess is the actual owner of Cafe Clutch. So... I'm going to do, well, I mean, you'll, there's probably going to be an interview by the time this comes up. <laughs> but Jess has kind of curated a, a bunch of people from the food to the coffee to the beers to, like, the artwork that comes here to just everything, even the events, which is what I'm doing. She's curated, like, a bunch of people to contribute to this one place that opened in this specific location opened in 2020. The, uh, she's obviously had one a long time ago in 2014 in what hospital? What was it? What hospital? Oh, uh, the Gen- uh, maybe the Genesis Center, but she also like, has... Uh, I like only know, like, probably ask Jess, but definitely um, I think at the Genesis Center, but don't quote me, and also like at the CBC building, and also the, when I first met her, I was at Community Wise, though. 
Mm -hmm. The community was building in a literal cupboard. Yeah. But I mean, Jess is like from the art scene. She was a practicing artist and like, I don't think, know if she's a curator, but she did stuff with the new gallery. So she does like curate stuff very, but also very open about experimenting too. Yeah, that's one thing I got to say though, is literally she gives the option for people to just express themselves like fully. Like the learning library was your idea for sure, right? Like, but like she was like, all right, let's try it. And then it became like a kind of like a, th I think a thing that's like not really talked about in, in Cafe Clutch enough is the lending library and what actually came from it. Like it became like a queer lending library and I'll explain the queerness of Cafe Clutch later on. But I think that's like one thing that like people, in my opinion, I think people should just like understand it's like it's there's so many moving parts to this thing oh i forgot there's also the pantry outside the food pantry outside now you remember yeah <laughs> so there's like so many parts to this but i think you're such a big part of it like even like the shows that you've done warm leather red even pansy club you're clearly a big part of that too and you clearly help like, them out well, i'm just supporting like uh cal's the cal's the one that Cal's the big, the big dog of Pansy Club. They wear the fancy pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I love Pansy Club, so, like, they're the competition that I love. Yeah. I mean, we, like, Pansy Club is, like, different, but we share the same gear, and, like, we share, like, a lot of the same people. Yeah. But it is different, but it's, like, just, like, different in, like, a way that, like, I totally support it, and, like, yeah, we support each other. I just appreciate that. <laughs> and, like, yeah, Cal is a really good DJ. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell people that, but book Cal. But book Cal. <laughs> also book Sean. Oh, don't do that. Don't book Sean. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have like more questions. It's like goes in depth. I really do want to know more about like bad shows you've ran and good shows you've ran too. Oh yeah. Like one sh bad show we ran is the one that. We put on, and all all it really, really was is like me getting in a fight with one of our mutual friends. No one coming. Oh no! And then a bags of chips that Jess ate. <laughs> I remember that. One. So, I'll, I'll explain it to people. We we put on an all ages event, and it was like supposed to be like non alcoholic, and we made like all these chips, and we tried to get people to come out. And it was just impossible, <laughs> like impossible. And apparently Jess came to that event. And I don't even remember that. That was so long ago. But Jess came to that event. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and like, yeah, we obviously didn't make money off of that event. That was like one bad one. But we've like, you've probably had ones like before in the punk scene that I like want to know, like oh, your uh, beginner events. I mean, I put on a lot of punk shows like at like Sunny Side. Uh, community center and then I ran a put on a lot of shows at the Chinese National League what? yeah back in the day really? and then yeah I put on a lot of shows at like the basement of a thrift store in Ogden that was my venue ages. yeah how hard was it to run all ages shows? <laughs> hard, hard but like it's okay yeah I believe anyone can do it it like it's worth it if you don't like get kids to like play shows now, they won't do anything when they're adults. They won't have like, and like, uh, yeah, I put on lots of good shows. Yeah. No, they, nothing like, nothing really bad ever happened as far as I know, mm -hmm. other than losing money. But that's like what you get into when you put on all ages shows. Yeah. Like you know you're gonna lose money. Like that's just the way it is. What's, what's like one good? thing that you've learned from throwing shows <laughs> like one really good thing that you could recommend to other people kids are going to do what they want but they're also pretty rad <laughs> also 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 oh my god it, it, it like slipped my mind this is why I have to get these questions prepared I have them prepared for Jess but it's all like it's all like it's all like good like i i just like really want to 
pick your brain about running events because I just do seriously think it's like different like even like even like the annoying stuff like I know we've talked about Facebook and why you're annoyed with Facebook you should probably talk about why it's annoying now (laughs) I mean uh I love being annoying on the internet it's like my but also like honestly before like in the early 2000s we didn't there was MySpace but like it was like you started to rely on social media so much more because it was like so much more convenient and easy but Facebook would let you like Facebook would let you invite like 2,000 people and now like they only let you invite 200 so you're kind of in a pickle because you assume that only 0. Point, not even being bitter you assume like 0.5% of the people you invite are going to come so it's kind of like made it harder because you start to rely on it and like handing out flyers is like and postering is but no one looks at posters as much and we don't have the physical like fast forward and stuff so we've really relied on Instagram and Facebook but now it's like they want their money which is fair I guess but uh, if it's not happening on Facebook and Instagram it seems like it's not happening well honestly like kind of like that's why I've kind of like had to do I've, like, taken this upon myself to do it, and I think it worked for my whole collective DMK, which is, which is like, kind of representing people like that, and I've been doing that since 2010. I just haven't found the right people. I ran into you in 2016 when we were... I don't even remember how I ran into you. Like, how did that even happen? I don't remember, but I think I, like, disappeared, and then you, like, had to find me. I didn't, like, disappear, but I, like, stopped doing things for a bit, and then you, like, got Cora to, like, find me. I have a terrible memory. Like, maybe it was Cora? Who it might have been Cora. So, maybe I went to an event with Cora. Like, I didn't... Like, I knew Isis from before because of, like, we... I dated... Like, we dated members of the same family, which is weird, but I dated her ex-partner's sister back in the day. So long ago. Yeah. Uh, so, maybe through, like, Isis. I also, like, knew Hannah, kind of. And, like, maybe a few of those Emirates. I, like, Emirates went to high school with my brother. Yeah. So it could have been any of those people, too. But, like, I wasn't, like, in the DJ scene or anything. Like, I would go to stuff, like, once in a while, like, with my friends, but... I, I, have, to, I have to say this. I have to say this. I think I lost, like, 15 minutes of video, but it's all recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. I'm going to, like, loop it or something. I'm just going to, like, loop it because, like, you can't really tell. But I was going to say that um, back when we first met, I'm pretty sure I wanted to do all-ages events, and I wanted to do, like, sober events because at the time I was just trying to, like, throw sober events where I could, and it was really hard, especially here. In Calgary, because people, well, people in Calgary relied so hard on liquor sales. Like, yes, we are also relying on liquor sales here too at Cafe Clutch, but at the same time, we also have alternatives for the sober people so that they can like have a good time type of thing. So it was hard for us to put on events because a lot of people were just turning us down, and that was actually another hard thing. Is like you disappeared, and I was like. I need to figure out how to put on these events and I can't find Liam anywhere. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it kind of didn't work out, which is fine. I think in in the long run, we like found a place where we can actually try it again. Yeah, there's like, uh, sorry. Also because like I've never done DJ events. I think it was a DJ like before. So it was like, it was harder. And yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes I get into drama, not perfect. Uh, but, like, we figured it out, and then I started doing DJ nights with uh, with Lewis. Like, we did two DJ nights with Lewis, and, like, I kind of figured it out more. And then now, like, it's full circle where you're kind of, like, we're both, like, working towards, like, Warm Leather Ad and Pansy Club and all that stuff, like, together. And, like, I think we figured it out more. Yeah. It takes a while to get adjusted, but, like, it, and coming from the punk scene, I was, like, and most of my friends are older, so it's, like, having older friends that are not into DJing that are more into punk and a sober all ages show is was hard but we figured it out and like yeah Cafe Clutch doesn't really push 
people can drink if they want, but like it's not the focus. Yeah. It's not like it's not a party spot, and like it's not a club venue. It's like we've really been pushing like more. Like it's a show, and you come to see your friends and your the talent, and like socialize and dance. Like you're not here to like get like blackout. Yeah, I, I think um, for for that actually, I, I want to say just in case, like we want you to have a good time. We really do, and it's not like we're like, oh, you cannot drink and whatever. I, we get it. We get it. Like people, sometimes people get wasted, and that's fine. I think what we're trying to push is more people watching shows and people listening to the music and people actually understanding what the whole vibe is here. It's a very friendly, queer, very queer friendly space, but it's not like we're all just about being queer. <laughs> it's really more about being inclusive and that's why we use the queer label in a more inclusive way. But a lot of people kind of take it as well you got to be this way to be no it's not that it's just we want a safe space for people who are queer and if you aren't queer but you want to hear good music that's like kind of the whole point yeah like our like one of like my new friends like he doesn't feel comfortable taking his queer friends out to the club because like shit might go down but he feels comfortable like and he's like straight dude but like he's best bro is like queer and like he's not gonna like take him out a place where like his friends gonna have a bad time so it's not like I'm not I don't identify as queer but like if, when I go out I'm not gonna like bring my queer friends to a club where people are gonna be assholes you should, you should talk, about, you should talk about Robert. that's what I'm talking about Robert yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so like yeah his best bro is like this amazing queer DJ and like Robert's just gonna have his back so he's not gonna take him to like crappy spaces where like something might go down yeah, so. like he's that's just not how he rolls so like he can bring his friend here, and, like, he knows his friends are going to have a good time, like, and his friend, so, like, it's, like, a queer-friendly space, but, like, it's important to be able to take your queer, like, as a non-queer person, be able to take your f queer friends so you're not, like, getting in weird situations. So, actually, that's another thing. I remember my friend Don. That's, like, my best friend of all time. Don, like, danced hard the whole time. <laughs> so, Liam met my friend Don for the very first time, but that's, like, my best friend. We talk all the time. Like, every day we talk. Um, I don't bring Don out that much because... They're too good for this world. <laughs> oh. Liam says they're too good for this world if no one heard that. But it's the, it's the whole trans diaspora. It was, like, a very hard thing. It's, like, we went to a lot of straight clubs together, and people would be like, oh, she's pretty hot for a man. Yeah, that's, that's a not cool. Like, that's just, like, a not appropriate thing to say. Just, like, at all. Or people would just scream out while I'm walking next to my friend, oh, you know that's a man, right? And I'm like, what are you, like, what are you trying to say? Like, what are you trying to prove right at that one moment? So... Is that you're a douchebag. Yeah. So, I... Me, personally, I didn't feel comfortable inviting like my friend Dawn everywhere where she has to like encounter all this bullshit and then like there's only this one place even like I'm not I, I could name another gay bar but I'm not going to but I'm gonna say that that one's more focused on straight cis oh no gay cis het males I, I, I like some weird situations taking my like trans friends out and like people are just like talking shit I'm like who are you like community like especially for the trans community that I think like that was it was a hard place to find people to do all this stuff so the moment I played Cafe Clutch here actually like September I was like I feel like this is something different somehow Liam's involved all my friends are somehow in this place I need to get involved somehow <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. I think Jess booked you because you have coffee experience, but also because you make great dark wave. Oh, yeah. and, and you don't DJ, but I've seen you DJ dark wave. No, I DJ. I'm DJ. I was just joking. Everyone book John. No, don't book me. <laughs> John's goth. He doesn't care. <laughs> it's not that I don't care. It's just weird when people tell me that, like, say stuff like that. But, um, yeah, like, 
just this venue in general just kind of gave an opportunity for a lot of people to just like explore themselves and be themselves and it made me real happy and all that stuff and like I said this is like the first venue where I've actually invited my friend and he didn't feel or she didn't feel like she was attacked like she just wasn't attacked by any single person Don, Don rules <laughs> Liam said that if Don showed up at all my events, they would be successful. <laughs> it's true. Because <laughs> Don was dancing the whole time. And we were just talking about Don now. Um, but yeah, I, I think I just want to like point out like there is a lot that Liam's been involved in this one place. And it takes like a billion people to get this place involved. I think I'm going to wrap this up because I feel like we got everything we really needed. I don't think I need to put any more into this interview <laughs> doesn't need to be two hours because i feel like well i mean i can edit it but it's like i i can i'll do i don't know if i'll do podcast again i i can easily do podcast but i want to do like videos for now well everyone's a video person if you really think about it <laughs> I do. I love podcasts too, but I, I want to put this on YouTube so that people can like see more of it. Shout out to Vimeo. Shout out to Vimeo. <laughs> We're gonna do YouTube. Um, I want you to promote yourself right now, like as in follow you, links and stuff like that. You follow me, I will spam you. But follow me at Warm Leather at four hundred three on Instagram. My website I'm just developing is warmwarm.org. Nice. And message me if you want to learn how to DJ at a very chaotic Sunday, six to eight, or if you're if you do want to play shows. Like the whole point of Warm Leather is like if you're a completely beginner. Wait, 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 wait. I I have to talk about this before we go. You're opening up a venue. Maybe. Maybe, but you also. Actually, wait, I haven't even talked about this before. Each one, teach one. Can you explain that? You used to do that, and I really want people to know oh, what yeah. that's about. I can like, a lot of this stuff, like, is, like, so before I ran a free, like, before when John was young. I, when I was two years old. When John was 20, probably something years old, I ran a free school that, like, uh, did a lot of, like, uh, classes Man, and I'm stuttering, but it was like based on like anarchist free schools and like each one teach one and like so like basically and like the pedagogy of the oppressed, which is like just like kind of teach as far as like the, what I interpret is like teaching people that they can learn and that they're smart and they have things to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, but each one teach one, like yeah, like I don't know if I quite like I didn't like co- like say that I was the one that we were doing that, but like I based it on that. Like so basically like. Especially for DJ, for now, for uh, Controller Club is, like, now we have people that are, like, confident enough to teach the basic levels of DJing to the new people. And then we'll have the more experienced DJs teaching the people that are teaching the new people, the sec- like, the second level of skills. So everyone's confident enough to teach each other because, like, yeah, um, knowledge wants to be free, which sounds super cheesy. But, like, D- like DJing, like, the theory behind it is a lot easier than people think. Obviously, practice and talent to be the best, like a really good DJ. But like, people are very scared to start, or they feel silly, or they feel like they're not good enough. Mm-hmm. So, basically, yeah, that's like. I got one thing. Um. So, what were the classes you had in each one? Each one, you had like a ton of classes, and I don't remember all of them. So, it was, each one, each one would be a cool name, but it was actually the Calgary School of Informal Education. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, like, yeah, we, people, I think you were, like, really stoked. You're like, you do each one, teach one. Uh, and I would fail a quiz on, like, the history of each one, teach one. Yeah. But, uh, so, a lot of it was just, like, my thing was, like, uh, my friend Eleanor was Japanese. So, like, she doesn't need a PhD in Japanese to teach a Japanese class. She has lived experience and, like, knowledge. So, she taught a Japanese, like, she taught Japanese. Uh, I another, knew another dude that was, like... He was, he spoke Spanish, so he's taking a Spanish class. But I also had people that, like, 
did have academic knowledge and they were teaching like about feminism. We did some computing classes. Mm -hmm. That's how I knew more about Slava. I think so, through Slava, through music and through, because DJing and also through computing. A lot of these people are kind of like this in the same circle. There's a lot of DJs that are into computing and like, um, what other classes do we do? We did like a lot of still screening classes. Kind of the stereotypical punk stuff too. Oh, pure data. We did stuff on pure data. Um, this was a while ago. Like anything that people are like had the skills and knowledge in that they could teach yeah. confidently. I, I like because I know you and you've been trying to get me to do play more DJ gigs, like teach DJ gigs. I'm so skeptical of it. I'm not anymore because now I need money. <laughs> yeah, uh, but desperation changes. Like uh, desperation changes. Uh, yeah, you're, I think you'd be a great teacher. I need you money. I do. I really do. <laughs> Sean needs money. Book him. I think, like, also just a thing that what I've noticed as you being a promoter is that you actually reach out to random people out of nowhere. I know you've tried to book me at other places, and I'm like, what the hell? I wasn't even looking. And you were just like, I'm trying to help out my homies. I feel like it's easier. Why, why not? And I'm like... It's a good call. So. Trying, like, you know, like, when you, like, get people, like, you're trying to help out your friends, like, your circle, like, so, like, if I can get, like, grant grants or paying gigs, you're going to try to help out your friends, like, you're trying to get your friends paid, because I see, like, what DJs, I mean, I see what people are not, like, my circle, I wouldn't even say I'm from the DJ scene, it's, like, DJ Jason that's, like, warmed my way into, like, doing this stuff, but, like, a lot of people have been like super supportive but like you always want to hook people up and like reach out and like give people like okay paying gigs yeah I, I mean like that's how I started <laughs> so I mean with DMK I tried to make sure that everybody got paid for their gig they probably didn't get paid on the night but I had to work my ass off for it so I'm very much so in debt right now <laughs> I'm very much so in debt right now from paying for trying to get people to pay gigs, but it's what well, like that's not the issue. I like what they play. I want to build a community of people who actually play good music. I don't want to just build this community. What people usually do is they go by numbers, and I'm like, I, I don't think we should go by numbers. And I feel like even like Cafe Clutch, we're we're going by numbers, but not because we want to. It's because we have to. <laughs> so, um. Like I said, Jess has been very transparent and has told me what's going on in Cafe Clutch. So I know the ins and outs of it. I'm not going to go into detail about it because I feel like I really want people to just be introduced to this place before we tell you about what we're struggling with. <laughs> so, yes, I just I want to explain that because like Liam has been in like so many different circles. And I feel like everybody should have like one person like that that just like knows that type of thing or knows who's coming out or knows the in crowd or whatever like something similar to that so i've tried to curate as many people as i possibly could that have helped this place and liam is one of the big ones and it's funny how they how liam has lived with jess it's like what it's like the way people are connected here is like just something i feel like you'll never see there's something that i like actually see that's bigger than really the place itself i feel like it's bigger than the place itself and the only way to tell that is to like get people to like listen to stuff like this <laughs> um so i'm going to get you to do the call to action again <laughs> which is follow you on these things oh, yeah. and because I just, I don't know if we got all the sources. Like, you're on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff? No, I mean, um, mostly Instagram. I just, like, go where, like, maybe, I think I'm not, I'm too old for TikTok. But John is really good at TikTok. Instagram just seems like the best because I can, like, reach, chat, like, reach out to people. But, like, mostly, honestly, Instagram at Warm Weather at 403. Mm -hmm. And then on my website that I'm developing is warmwarm.org. Yeah. Um, Instagram, like, and it seems like everyone has Instagram right now. Like, not many people are using Facebook as much. Like, mm -hmm. so I think Instagram is like easier. But if not, just reach out to John and he'll find me. <laughs> so true. 
Anyways, thank you guys. I'm going to end this interview. I'm not going to ask any more questions. I feel like we got the gist of it. Um, please come to Cafe Clutch, everybody. Please, please come to Cafe Clutch. <laughs> it would make my entire life if you came to Cafe Clutch just because this is such a unique space. It utilizes art. It utilizes books like the old library there's zines we sell zines here and we sell stickers from random people in the community it's a very community-based place and in a place like alberta we can't be missing stuff like this so thank you everybody i will see you next time